Welcome to Reedy's online service. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Hey, Robbie, good to see you. And you? How's your week been? Uh, my week? Yeah, it's been pretty good. Stuff's busy, mm, but... Yeah, it is busy uh, at the moment. Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hang on. There was something else that happened this week. Oh! <laughs> Happy birthday, hon. I uh, hope you have a good one. Yeah, happy birthday. Hey, and a couple of other things that are uh, coming up. Um, first of all, today in our service we're going to have communion. So if you wouldn't mind just getting um, whatever you use, bread and, and some juice ready for communion, that, that'll be great. Mm. And uh, also in our service we're looking at the roadmap to renewal and going to hear from a couple of people a bit about that and some teaching about that as, as well. Also today, uh, the leadership team are meeting uh, because we are looking at our roadmap of when we come back together and, and so on. So keep praying for the leadership team and for discernment there. But also we're excited because we've got some proposals and plans about when we do come back for our youth, for a big day of fasting and prayer and um, and how we're going to do the multiple services and so on. I'm quite excited about what's, what's going to... Yeah, yeah, it should be good and um, there's a real heart, real vibe returning to the building. The op shop's got its big sale on this week and there's been a constant flow of people in and out and buying coffee and food and the volunteers yeah. are back so it's buzzing. Yeah, things yeah. are on the move. Yeah, thanks again volunteers for all that you're doing and thank you Karen, you're doing a great job with Reedy Care. And also, um, the stuff in America at the moment, which is also influencing around uh, the world and, and this weekend in different capital cities and mm -hmm. so on, it's, it's quite big. What's your take on it? Yeah, it's quite astonishing, isn't it, when you see those pictures and, you know, it's a pretty complex issue, there's no doubt about that. But I, I think if we are all continually asking ourselves, how do we love like Jesus loved? How do we love our neighbour? Um, I, I think that'll go a long way to dealing with some of those complexities. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you and, and we're just grateful to our God how he just treats us all equally. He came for all people. Well, let's continue to worship our God now by singing this great song.
We've got Michelle Myberg joining with us this morning to share with us a little bit about what's going on in her family and how the last few weeks have been. Michelle, COVID-19, pandemic in Australia, how have the Mybergs been handling it? Robbie, we've been going well and the more I think of it, I really hope it's a once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed the homeschooling but I'm glad the kids are back at school and we also enjoyed having a more relaxed um, schedule and not so many things to go to and it was great working from home. Yeah, Dee um, obviously brought you breakfast in bed most days. Yes. Oh. He's a good man. <laughs> oh, you're making me look bad now, Michelle. <laughs> Don't know about this. Now, mentioned just before, you guys from Namibia originally and yeah. you still have family over there. How, how's your family been coping with the pandemic and what's been the effect of COVID in Namibia? The family is going well. Um, Dee's family is more, um, his dad's in an uh, aged care um, facility, so the family couldn't visit him at all. Um, so they just had to ring him. Mm. Um, with um, his brother who's got his own business, they were kind of, it's hard for them because they still have to keep paying wages. They're not allowed to let anybody go and the government is not giving any support to help with subsidies. So having a business in Africa is not easy. And with my family, they're fortunate enough, um, they are hobby farmers. So they just went to the farm whenever they could to just get out of the city. And um, But the people in Namibia are getting, I sense of since they are more angry and they oppressed and they feel the government is not looking after their best interest because of corruption and everything that goes with it but the main thing is people feel oppressed their schools just started back for year 11 and 12 but they're talking about the rest won't go back till august um, so yes the families there are having a hard time doing work and schooling and there's no real outcome for yeah. them. Recently you did an online survey that we did on our Reedy Creek Baptist Church Connects Facebook page and you ticked the box that said that you're interested <laughs> in the new normal but don't know what it will be yet. Why did you tick that box? Um, for us or for me personally it's more like I know there will be a new normal um, and with being down on things we have to do and commitments we had, I realized that maybe we have to reschedule a lot of things and maybe learn to say no to certain things and just um, spend time with the things that's really important for us. Um, if it's more church related, for me it was more like it was nice having an option. I like would like coming to church, have the option coming to church, but in the event that we can't come to church because of other commitments, I would love to have an option to maybe view that sermon at my own leisure mm. um, later that week. Yeah, I think we're all looking forward to and trying to anticipate what the new normal will be and obviously that involves the way that we live out our faith in, in, in a church community. Hey, lots of thanks for joining <laughs> us this morning and sharing a little bit about your home life and your family back in Namibia. Thank you.
we're just going to enter into a time of communion uh, together. And uh, what well, I've been looking at new things in this new series, a roadmap to renewal, and we come to communion and recognizing that with communion, Jesus was instituting a whole new covenant, a very new thing. The Passover would no longer be about remembering the past and the freedom from slavery in Egypt, but now freedom for all of humanity from the slavery to sin to those that accept Jesus. And the new thing was, we won't remember the past, now you will remember me. He says in 1 Corinthians 11, he broke the bread and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And this morning we take a piece of bread together and we eat in remembrance of Jesus. And he took the cup as well. And he renewed what the cup was about. No longer will we proclaim our freedom from Egypt, but we would proclaim our freedom from sin. And he says in 1 Corinthians 11, he goes, For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you will proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. So if remembering is about our internal remembering of what Jesus has done, his blood and his body and the great sacrifice that he took. Proclaiming it is reminding each other and telling each other the story of the story the story of Jesus, of his death and his resurrection, of the blood that he spilt and the body that was broken. So this morning we're going to drink together proclaiming Jesus' death. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we remember the sacrifice that your son made. Jesus, the great cost that you paid for our sins. And Lord, we proclaim it together to one another and to the ends of the earth, Father, we proclaim your death and resurrection and we thank you for it. Thank you that we can be in communication and in love and in relationship with you. Amen. May the road rise up to meet you And the wind be on your back May the sun shine warm well, Good morning, everyone. We want to take a few moments as a church to lift our hearts to the Father, remembering the blessings and the needs that come to mind. It's been interesting to me to see that in both the national and the local news, Concerns about the coronavirus have been replaced with reporting on the riots going on in America. Well, I wouldn't want to say that uh, one is more important than the other, but instead just urge us to all exercise the wisdom and discernment that we're given through God's Holy Spirit. And let's pray as we're led and let His Holy Spirit direct our thoughts. So just now, let's take a breath and... Rejoice in the unity that comes to us thanks to our participation as part of the body of Christ. Let's pray. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to lift our prayers to you, knowing that as we do so, we join our brothers and sisters united by a common bond through a common faith and a very uncommon Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to begin by thanking you for all the blessings that are ours this morning. Blessings of healing in our bodies, and our minds, our emotions, and our spirits. Personally, I want to thank you for a successful completion of my cancer treatment. The confidence that we all feel just now. A couple of months from now, I'll undergo a scan and pray now that it will confirm what we already believe, that the cancer has been defeated. There are many others within our church family who have shared similar blessings and we praise you for your willingness and your power to step in and heal us. 
restoring us the strength and the ability to do what you've set before us. Lord, we lift up Elaine Flett, Shirley Cook, for Tom Cyril, for Janelle Fraser's father. They all need your comfort and your healing touch today. Please speak to them as well as only you can. We pray for our church and our leaders for an extra measure of wisdom in the coming days as our nation begins the slow process of returning to business as usual. Finances are at the forefront of our thoughts today, Father, for the budget needs of our church and for those among and around us who are doing it tough because of all the punches we've taken the last few months. Restore and rebuild, we pray. We don't ask for great wealth, just for what you and your wisdom would grant us. And may we use what we receive for your glory and for the honor of your name. For our church, help us know when and how to bring corporate worship back into the building. Protect us with good health and strength. And may our activities as a church speak volumes to our community so that all will know what a wonderful, powerful, loving God we serve. Continue, please, to make us relevant to the world around us in the days of uncertainty and struggles we're all facing. Use us, Father, as your tool to declare your gospel message to all who will listen. Bless us that we, well, we may be a blessing to those around us. We do pray for peace, dear Father. We only have to lift our eyes to see that we're living in a war zone. Everywhere we look, we see hatred and fear and ignorance being used by the enemy of this world. Please, don't let his destructive work carry on. Remind him that he is a defeated enemy and his days are numbered. And to underscore that fact, please bring peace now where there is war. Love where there is hate healing where there is suffering. Thank you for the assurance that even now, wherever we are at this moment, we can lift our prayers to you, knowing that they are carried all the way to your throne. You hear us, and you answer us when we call. Thank you for that promise. Thank you for this opportunity to experience the results of your promise and to know that we are not alone. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Praise you, Holy Spirit. And praise you, Jesus. And it's in your holy name that we offer this prayer. Amen. Thank you. You stood before creation, eternity in your hand, and you spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand.
Two months ago I stood here and the world was changing rapidly. I was highlighting our increased anxiety and our fears about what the future would hold. We were heading into isolation. We were closing down our schools. Governments were closing borders. It felt really strange. But now we're coming out the other end and things are opening up again. We're going back to work and the schools are open and even on the 12th of July we can begin to meet, albeit in a reduced capacity, at church. The new normal is upon us, but what is the new normal? People are beginning to ask that question, how will they move forward from this point on? What will normal look like for them? What will normal look like for you? Today I'm sitting here with Emily Townsend and first of all, welcome, good to have you here. Thanks for sharing with us uh, today. Emily, uh, what do you do? So I work at Hillcrest Christian College and I'm the school counsellor there. Mm. And the last couple of weeks, all the children have come back to school and what's your workload been like? Yeah, so I've been very busy the last two weeks. It's been a big adjustment for people coming back. Some students have been away since even uh, term one, so quite a large time away. So. Yeah, significant for them to be coming back into our school community. And what have been some of the issues that the children have come to see you about? Yeah, well I guess in, in our students' lives, as with all of us, there's been so much change in the last few months. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of changes in people's home lives. So some, you know, some both parents might have lost their jobs and that's put an extra load of stress on family units and, um, and students, you know, pick up on that, that impacts on them. Uh, there's been changes in, in friendship groups and social dynamics with some students being at school and some being away. Uh, there's been stress for students who fear that they might be falling behind in their school work um, or worried about what school's going to look like when they return. Uh, and I think that heightened awareness about COVID-19 um, and you know, are they at risk of illness? Are they going to become unwell? So just uh, helping them to understand that that bigger picture and give them some strategies and some tools to manage what they're going through. Yeah, yeah. good on you. Do you know if parents, kids, yourself, are looking for a new normal? Yeah, I think in the school setting it's inevitable that we're going to have some kind of new normal because obviously things have changed so yeah. dramatically with online learning. Um, and there's been parts of that that have been really good and really positive uh, that we would um, probably want to look at what's been good and hold on to that uh, and re-examine things. So things are definitely going to change moving forward. I know with my work um, I shifted to doing counselling sessions online with uh, students who were at home so that we could continue the work that we've been doing and support students who were at home and struggling. So it's been great to be able to learn that technology and learn how to use it. Uh, and yeah, we can continue with that in the future if we need to. Speaking of the new normal and, and technology, you have also been doing uh, video clips um, that have been a great help for children and parents. Tell us a little bit about those clips. Yeah, so that was um, part of Hillcrest wanting to reach out to families and community and recognise that people are going through some challenges, um, particularly around emotional and mental health at the moment, and we wanted to support our community in that and a good way to do that is to provide uh, information and encouragement and links to services that can help people. Yeah. We're actually going to watch um, one of these uh, clips now, but before we do, thank you so much for your amazing ministry up at Hillcrest Christian College and being there for the kids and for uh, the family. God bless you in, in all that you do up there. Thank you. Hi Hillcrest community, it's Emily Townsend here from the wellbeing team. And I just wanted to have a chat with you today about this thing that we call anxiety. Now, anxiety is really, really normal experience. Everyone will experience anxiety at some time in their life. And it will feel different for different people. So some people get physical symptoms, like they get a sore tummy or they might feel sick. Sometimes they get some trouble breathing or they might get shaky arms or legs. Sometimes it can feel like the blood's rushing through your body really, really quickly. Uh, it can affect your concentration so that you can't think clearly. It's all kinds of symptoms and it's different for everybody. Now, whilst these symptoms are pretty unpleasant, anxiety is actually a really important part of how our brain functions. You see, when God designed our brains, he gave us this super duper part called an amygdala. Now, an amygdala is very small. It's about the size of a marble, but for illustration purposes, let's pretend that this is the amygdala. And what the amygdala's job is, is to keep us safe. So the amygdala wants to protect us. So any time that it senses that we might be under threat or our safety is at risk, it turns on and releases these amazing chemicals through our body that gear us up to either run away, 
fight the threat or freeze until the threat passes. So as you can see, it's actually really, really important for our safety. Now, unfortunately, sometimes amygdala over here can get a bit enthusiastic about keeping us safe. And he can switch on when there's actually no real threat to our safety. It's at those times where it's really helpful for us to have some strategies where we can have a chat to the amygdala and tell him to calm down, that we're okay, that we're safe and we can return to normal. As we're all returning to school and to work and, and back to our normal activities, it's gonna be really common for many of us to experience some of these symptoms of anxiety because we're going into uncharted territory. We might feel a bit sick or a bit anxious. So if you'd like to know some strategies of how you can manage that, jump on the website. I'm gonna have some, some tips up there and have a play around and see if some of them work for you. And if it's becoming a really big issue for you and it's making it really hard for you to step back into community or back into those things that you were formerly part of, please have a chat to somebody, a trusted adult, a teacher, someone on the wellbeing team. We'd love to help you and support you to get through it. Thanks guys, bye. Your love's making all things new You're working in all for good And for the things of this world There is hope renewed In the life that is found in you For you And God does make all things new. Good morning and welcome again to our Reedy online service. We're starting a new series for the remainder of our online services, looking at your roadmap to renewal. As the Australian and state governments are rolling out their roadmaps to recovery, many are wondering and even hopeful of a new normal. During the lockdown, Many appreciated time to regroup and uh, spending time with family and, and not running around or traveling to work and school. In the Bible, God liked to renew, and He still does. Godly renewal is more than decluttering or, or seeking a sea change. It's a lot deeper with lasting fulfillment. In this series, we're going to be looking at biblical principles to help us discover and sustain a new normal. There is something about new, isn't there? When you get a new car or a new home, there's that sense of excitement. When you are accepted for a new position at work or, or a new job, there's a lot of joy and, and hope. New clothes, new computer, new friends, new beginnings, new seasons. There's something about new. Our God is in the business of doing new things. The Bible has heaps of references to the Lord doing new things, all promises to do new things. Let me show you. In the Old Testament, the Lord spoke to the prophet Ezekiel to say to the people in exile that God will one day allow them to return to their home country of Israel where they will experience something like a revival because God will put a new spirit in them. And that happened when Nehemiah returned and rebuilt those precious walls and, and the people returned and we are told that there was a great celebration. So much so that we are told that the sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard from far away. The Lord has put a new spirit in them. Also in the Old Testament and this is interesting for those of us who kind of grumble at times when the worship team introduces a new song that we don't know. But many times we are told about singing to the Lord a new song. In the book of Psalm, it repeatedly says, follow with me, 
Sing him a new song in Psalm 33 verse 3. In Psalm 40 verse 3 he says, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Psalm 96 verse 1, sing to the Lord a new song. Psalm 144 verse 9, I will sing a new song to you, my God. And even in Isaiah, it says in chapter 42 verse 10, sing to the Lord a new song. And then in the New Testament, the book of Revelation says in chapter 5 verse 9, and they sang a new song. And again in chapter 14 verse 3, and they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. I'm unaware of any command in the Bible to sing old songs. It's not disobedient, of course, to sing old songs. We love old songs. It just simply isn't something God needs to remind us to do. We love to um, uh, sing along or, or hum along what we already know in terms of the songs. But the Bible says again and again to sing a new song. Towards the end of the Old Testament era, there was a sense that God was going to do something new. Even God himself said to the prophet Jeremiah, this is what he says, this is in uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. He said, The days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. The old covenant between God and Israel was drawing to an end. But a new covenant was coming that would be between God and all people. And the New Testament teaches us that Christ is the new mediator of this covenant. This new covenant was brought about because of Christ's death on the cross, paying for our sins. And that is why in the Lord's Last Supper, he took that cup and he said, this cup which is poured out for you is the covenant in my blood. And before Pastor Robbie reminded us of this wonderful new covenant when he led communion. This new covenant results in new life for all who place their faith in Jesus Christ. And the New Testament talks a lot about this. Peter wrote in his first letter, he said, In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When the apostles were remarkably released from prison, the angel of the Lord said, said to them, Go, stand in the temple courts and tell the people all about this new life. Even in this new life, God wants to refresh and to renew us. In Romans 12, Paul tells the church here, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the renewal of our mind happens by the power of the Holy Spirit. Titus 3 verse 5 says this, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And then, in the last days, God is going to do something that is so amazing, so new, that we simply just can't comprehend what it will be like. The Apostle John was given this incredible glimpse of it. And this is what he wrote, and I want to read it in, in full because it's just so good. Listen with me. John said, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, 
God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was sealed on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost for the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this and I will be their God and they will be my children. Oh, wow. A new heaven and a new earth. God is into doing new things. Now, I appreciate that during the lockdown that it was difficult for people who were losing an income and that it was very hard for those whose homes aren't a happy place. And it was quite challenging for those who are like extroverts, who, who get their energy from being with people. There were also many people that did things that they normally wouldn't really do. Can you remember in those first few weeks of lockdown? I mean, many went for walks. You probably went for, for walks. In fact, families went for walks around their neighborhood. It was really nice to see couples and families walking together, neighbors who didn't really know each other, catching up and getting to know each other better. Families who were doing FaceTime with each other. My siblings and I, we, we did that and so did too, Lisa and I with, with our daughters. Mind you, we didn't say a lot of things that were sensible because a lot of the times it was just full of laughter. A lot of people did this and people posted their group photos on Facebook. I love seeing a variety of countries representing many different people who have been putting these up on YouTube and so on, singing that song, The Blessing, which is a new song. And last Sunday, which was Pentecost Sunday, it was a day in which the early church was empowered by the Holy Spirit, but it's also been seen as a time of unity between the churches. And to celebrate Pentecost, last week there was a whole bunch of worship pastors in Victoria from across the denominations that took part in singing King of Kings. It was awesome. Some of us spring cleaned and decluttered around our homes. So much so that the queues at the reedy tip were, were, were huge. The lockdown for many may have been challenging, but it was also something wholly new and, and forced us to slow down and appreciate what we do have. So much so that people are now desiring a new normal. We heard Michelle Myberg just before that the lockdown has forced her family just to evaluate and perhaps desire a new normal. Zena Davison started up a Facebook group called Ready Connect. Her purpose is to get Ready people to share and discuss things during this period of time. I put a 
quick survey together asking the people on that Ready Connect to indicate which best represents them. And they were, I would like a new normal, but don't know what that is yet. I'm looking forward to my new normal and I'm happy to go back to what was my pre-COVID normal. And you can see the results. The majority, for whatever reason, want a new normal. And personally speaking, I would like a new normal. Life was just getting too busy and, and I don't even have dependent children. Decluttering our life of mess and busyness and gadgets is a great idea. We have crowded our life with too much. We have allowed things to build up that can and have caused separation from things that really matter. So decluttering is a good step. The challenge is to keep our lives simple. When Lisa and I went to Malawi, we experienced firsthand incredible poverty. The mortality rate there is just 33 years old. That is just so incredibly low. Walking through one little hospital that serviced an area about the size of the Gold Coast, we saw mother after mother after mother sitting on the floor with their really sick child, with their bloated stomachs, waiting for basic medication like Panadol that we can easily get at any petrol station. This and other sites had a profound impact upon us and so we made some decisions that we have kept such as supporting our missionaries and Baptist World Aid that care for the vulnerable. However, I have to admit though, there were some decisions that I have not kept, uh, such as when I said to myself, why do I need a new latest iPhone? I was quite adamant about that at the time. That was going to be part of my new normal. Well, in time, when we did get back, life returned to normal again. And the new iPhone had just come out and all that wonderful marketing and I just couldn't help but get one. That's the thing. You can make these good decisions to declutter, but when things start to influence us again, we are back to the old normal. So make the decision and do your best to stick with it. The other thing is decluttering from stuff and busyness will only go a certain way. You see, because God has created us as spiritual beings, there's that desire in each of us for something deeper. And the new normal must address that deep desire. Christianity teaches that the real desire can only be met with a relationship with Jesus. The new normal will not be the absence of troubles and hardships and anxiety as Emily referred to just before. Unfortunately, they will always be around however simple your life becomes. Jesus though, he offers peace of mind and hope and purpose through it. Whatever the new normal may look like for you, whether you're searching for it or you've made some decision about it or not, your new normal must include a deepening relationship with Jesus. You see, in time, your new car, your new house, your new clothes and computer, they will become old and won't be as fulfilling anymore. God, though, offers something far deeper and fulfilling. The Bible says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh, God's mercies. They are new every morning. God is into new things. Whatever your new normal will be, it must include a, a deepening relationship with God. And this may mean that you need to seek renewal. In the Bible, Job was a man who had suffered a lot, a lot of loss, experienced immense grief, and yet he was somebody who 
desperately wanted a new normal. He said in Job 14 verse 14, All the days of my hard service I will wait for my renewal to come. And as hard as it was for Job, he waited. And we are told right at the end of Job, we are told the Lord blessed the last part of Job's life even more than he had blessed the first. God, through the prophet Isaiah, declared that those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. It's a wonderful promise that those who wait on the Lord will be renewed. To wait on the Lord is to be patient. Got what seems to be unanswered prayers in your life? Wait on the Lord in His timing. God, He'll come through and you will be renewed. Waiting needs patience. In your new normal, renewal may not happen overnight. Be patient and wait. Keep asking and you will be heard. Keep seeking and you will be found. Keep knocking and the door, it will be opened to you. Then you will experience renewal that is everlasting. As you look at your road map to a new normal, include going deeper with God. It will bring a lasting renewal as our God is into new things. For the next five weeks, we are going to look at how we can arrive at and sustain a renewed, deeper and fulfilled life with God. Oh, I want to pray.